received a question if I could explain what the difference is between gods and angels. Uh, the main difference is in their origin. Gods are in a way uh, emanations of the formless uh, cosmos. Um, so if you go beyond the collective consciousness you get into the layer where all the powers exist in their pure form. So you have love, hate, war, beauty, wisdom. Um, all these powers exist and they can manifest into myriad different forms and also in myriad different species. And it's actually from this layer of formless energies that gods derive their essence. So a god or deity is always you could say a manifestation of a certain power and the purpose of a deity is in a way to um, bring understanding of that power to the collective consciousness. So a deity is in a way uh, you could say a bridge from the collective consciousness of a species to the real essence of the thing which is no longer limited to that species. So for instance if I would uh, become an apprentice of the goddess of love or the god of love then ultimately I would learn and learn and learn and up until the level I will be able to understand all the manifestations, the essence of love as it is for human beings. And if I continue my learning, my apprenticeship, I will gain an understanding of what is the essence of love in, and how the essence of love is actually manifests in all beings, in trees, in plants, in dogs, and in all kinds of alien life forms, even in stones. And and this is actually the purpose of the deity, to help the members of a species to ascend to that level of consciousness. An angel, on the other hand, is there to carry out the will of God. It is, you could say, um, a servant or a slave to the will of God. It does not have a very specific desire or mission of its own. It does what it is made for what it is assigned to. So you could say that um, the very essential difference is that an angel has a master who it is obeying, while a deity is in a way yeah, respecting the higher powers, obeying the higher powers, but not being created as a tool or as a servant or as a messenger of the higher power. So, for instance, if a person is enlightened and has therefore ascended in his consciousness level to uh, a consciousness level which is above that of the gods, then if this person wants something, if he utters the right phrases, the right mantras, has the right connection with that power, then that power will obey, will do what this saint or holy person or uh, yogi will ask of it. But that doesn't make it into a slave. It is rather respecting that there are higher powers, higher authorities, and from that higher perspective there is more insight in what is right, what should be done, than the deity itself will have. So there are things higher than gods, but Besides the Supreme Being itself, there is nothing higher than an angel. I know it's a very popular modern theory to think that humans can evolve into being more than angels because we also have free will. Um, I would have to disappoint people who are entertaining this theory because you cannot ascend into the heavens or into the divine plan or get into harmony with our universe while you still have free will. The free will is something which needs to be sacrificed to gain that unity with the divine. So trying to have both, like having your free will and the powers of an angel, um, no, 
that's not going to happen. I'm sorry. Um, so, in other religions, they also see this essential difference. If you look, for instance, in Buddhism, there's talk about karmatic gods and non-karmatic gods. And what we normally look upon as deities are karmatic beings. They have a nature, like a goddess of love has the nature of love and cannot escape it. This is her essence. She can only be love. She can only manifest love. She can only teach love. God of war, he can only be war. He can only fight. He can only teach how to fight. He can only teach how to struggle. He cannot do anything else. So these deities are themselves very bound to their aspect. And the deities themselves arise from the readiness of a species to work with them. Um, so many deities we know here have arisen from humanity, but there are also deities which are in a way you could say imported uh, from other species, from other planets. And um, it is also possible for one power to have multiple deities. So for instance love as an energy is just an energy and there can be one deity of love which is teaching humans, there can be another deity of love which is teaching dogs, there can be another deity of love which is teaching doves. Um, so it is possible to have different deities per species but it is also possible for one species to have several deities or one deity to encompass several species. So there can also be one deity of love teaching all life on our planet, for instance. Ultimately, the form of the deity is dependent on the qualities of the species which is trying to learn from it. So, um, the deity itself is not within the formless realm, but it is on the cusp between the formless realm and the realm of form, the collective consciousness. And it is actually through the collective consciousness that it tries to create the archetypes, the paths which a person can follow to gain a greater understanding of the power of the deity, or the power which is in a way made manifest by the deity, and but which is also made manifest by the members of that species. If, for instance, humans would be unable to manifest war, or to manifest love, there would not be deities of love or war to teach humanity. They would not exist. And the more, in a way, our talents and our powers develop, the more teachers we will attract. Um, it is a little bit unfortunate, though, that people tend to progress very quickly <laughs> uh, in power, but not pay a lot of attention to the teachings of the deities who try to teach us what is the purpose of the power, how to master that power instead of being controlled or swept away by that power. So the god of, lo of love or the god of war, they're not good or evil. They're all teachers who are trying to get us to understand an energy, to get us to understand how to use that energy, what is the nature of the energy, what is the purpose of the energy, and how we can benefit from that energy. It is not that any deity is trying to propagate, in a way, or force their power upon us. It's not that the god of war is starting wars everywhere, or the goddess of love is making people have sex all the time. No. We do what we want. The gods don't grant us our own will. They grant us the possibility to become better at what we do. They can work together with us. So that through our bodies, the power of the god can manifest itself. Through healing, through teaching, through giving for instance, lectures. So they can inspire us, they can send us dreams, they can nourish our talents, they can share their own talents with us 
So we get kind of an imprint, or we can see a pattern, like, okay, this is how a god would do it. So let's try to strive to do it in a similar way, in a similar manner. So it is very much the purpose of a deity to blend its energy with ours, to really make this contact. And this is also um, what is the necessity for the contact with the deity, that we wish to develop that aspect, that we are really focusing ourselves on developing that aspect. So when it comes to deities, you cannot easily work with the whole pantheon because you have a very limited amount of time, of energy, of focus. So we tend to have to limit the amount of roles, the amount of paths we can walk at the same time. So we can go more in depth and become a true priest or priestess of a deity. An angel, on the other hand, um, does not blend its energy with us. It is also not a teacher. It is not there to teach us. It is there to carry out the will of God. And the only time an angel will interact with us, if it, if it is the will of the Supreme Being, that we should be interacted with. So you could say that a god or a goddess is very responsive. If I want to learn something, if I devote myself to it, I can make contact with that god or that goddess. I can go to the temples and receive the knowledge, the inspiration, the guidance of how to make some progress. Uh, I can pray to an angel all I like. Ultimately, the angel itself does not care. It is much more useful to pray to the Divine Being. If you pray to the Holy Spirit, to the Creator, then it is possible that as a result of that, an angel will be instructed to do something for you, to help you, to guide you, to give you a dream. Um, but the process is much more uncertain, you could say. If you look a little bit at the, at the hierarchy, um, you could say that if the problem is solvable from by a human or by at least a level of power which is reachable by humans, then it is probably easiest and best to pray to a god or a goddess because they can teach you how to do it yourself so you don't need to rely on their help in the future and um, this way you also get a benefit, also the energies of deities, because it is very attuned to your species. It is not destructive to your energy body. You can work with a god or goddess all you want, and it will be beneficial for your energy body. Your energy body will be pulled into a higher vibration because of the nature of the deity belonging to the very top of your species. Um, but you won't be pulled into very alien or very strange patterns as does happen when you interact with an angel. So in general I would advise people to work with deities rather than angels. Um, the other thing is also that um, people try to reduce angels to deities. They like to say, ah, oh, this is an angel of protection, this is an angel of healing, this is an angel of wisdom, this is an angel of this or that or such or so. And they think that if they want something, that this angel will act like a deity and will grant them, grant them the healing or the protection or the knowledge or the wisdom. But even if the angel is inclined to answer such a prayer, it will usually uh, send the answer or send the help through a deity um, or through some other spirit because the angel interfering with you directly is not very healthy for you. Um, also the perspective of an angel is too alien uh, just like a dog cannot understand like why I'm working on my computer uh, in the same way we cannot understand what an angel is doing or why it is doing what it is doing. So angelic knowledge is not very useful to us. We need knowledge which is very specific to the capabilities and to the understanding of human beings in our current form. So this is one of the reasons why 
deities are a lot more practical to use, to work with, than angels are. Hierarchically, you could say that deities are the first layer of really um, high level support we can get. One layer above, you would contact beings which have reached enlightenment. Beings which have reached enlightenment can often work with the powers or the talents of several deities, having yeah, gained full understanding of their qualities in a process of reaching this state of enlightenment. And through the help of an enlightened being, also many deities can be inspired to also support you and also to help you. If the enlightened being you're seeking contact with was human, then it is very likely that it has some memory or some understanding of what you need in your specific life or your specific situation because it understands human evolution. You can also work of course with other enlightened beings which have never been human, but it tends to be a little bit more, uh, more tricky. And only when things are not, yeah, cannot be solved even from the layer of enlightenment, then it would be good to yeah, go one step further and try to consult an angel. Uh, but personally I cannot think of many cases where this would be useful or necessary in an ordinary human lifetime.